let's create a number converter that is convert decimal number to binary number and binary number to decimal number so that's what we're going to learn how to create in this tutorial we're going to be using python and kvmd so we we'll use kvmd for the design of the interface then we'll use python for the implementation or for the coding or for the logic okay so as you can see so and it's fully validated so if i enter what is not uh, what does not conform with the platform it tells you that you are not supposed to do that but if i enter what is correct so it displays like i just entered uh decimal number so that displays the corresponding the corresponding uh binary number so if i flip it now go to the second part so i enter binary number but if i also enter something that does not conform to binary number so you see that it gives me uh, an error message telling me that it is an invalid input okay so you can see that that only zeros and ones are allowed so if i enter a uh, binary number so that it displays it so if i enter 10 it shows uh, 2 so if i enter 1000 it shows 8 so if i enter 10,000, it shows 16 and so on and so forth so you can do this with your calculator and see what you get but if i enter something that doesn't conform with a uh, uh, number that is a uh, uh, number yes that it displays the uh, error so as you can see so this is what we're going to do in this video so let's get started okay so these are the pictures okay the icons that we're going to use they are not actually that important but just to make the design look okay okay so these are the pictures we're going to use so i'm using vs code so move on to vs code now so so we'll bring the various imports or the various libraries that we're going to be using windows md screen label md fill round uh, flat button then test area a uh, test feed then top bar the image and so on so that's what i'm going to be using it is based on object oriented uh, programming principles so we'll create a class we'll call it binary uh decimal converter okay so once we create this so this is more or less like the boilerplate so we'll create a function okay so then we we'll set the theme to blue gray then we we'll create an object for the screen then we we'll set the icon for the window then we we um once we do that so what we need to do is we uh, set the size of the window so we want to set it to be 400 by 500 okay so that is the width and height where 400 is the width 500 is the height then we set the title of the windows okay so the so that is pretty much what you have so this is what we have so far all right so let's just see how it looks so if you run it so it looks like this so this is the uh the it's just an empty window nothing yet so what we need to do now we now need to set the the up bar that the top up bar then we set the title for that up uh, bar or that top up bar then we position it to be at the middle then we set it to the roof that's we'll take it up to the roof that will be the first thing that will appear at the top there so Within there, we need to add an icon to it. The icon that we use to flip or that we use to move to the other state, whether it is binary or that. Then that icon, when you click on it, it should call a function called change state. We have not created that function anyway. So now we now add this top uh, app bar to the screen. That is for the to the main application. All right. So as you can see here. All right. So this is what we have so far. So if you run it now, so let's see what we have. So look at that to so see how it looks. So that is the icon that we're going to use for uh, the changing of mode or state. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So the next thing we need to do is, uh, uh, so, okay, so the next thing we need to do is to create a, we'll add an icon underneath the top, uh, the top up bar. So one of the pictures I showed you earlier, that smiley face, so we just add it here. Then we also add it to the, we we'll put it under the up, uh, um, top bar. Okay, so then we'll add the, uh, we'll add it to the screen. So we have the screen dot add, add uh, widget. So like that. So this is what we have so far. So if you run it, you see that, yeah, right there, see that the icon show, I mean, this, uh, 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 graphic or image shows on that there okay so now once we have done that the next thing we need to do is to add a text field so we say self dot 
number input that is the, the the name we are giving it so we just position it under the icon that we showed earlier then we also add it to the screen so we say so add it to the screen we use a screen dot add widget so we can see that's what we have done so far in all of them so we need to add it to the screen otherwise it will not show so if you check it now so see that it shows the look at that so so that it shows underneath that so i've done something uh, similar to this before i'll share um some of the videos under the I mean, I will link the video, those videos in the description of this video. Then we'll add the button, just like we have added those other things. We'll also add the buttons. Then see that we'll position them on under the, uh, what is what we have created before. That is, we've, we've added the, all those other ones based on, I mean, under what we have done before. Okay, so this button is added under the input field. Okay, there's a little error. Oh, okay, so the position. Okay, we need to add the command there. Add comma on line 50 at the end of there. Then we also need to okay at 53. We need the method is not created there or the function is not created there. So let's comment it. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do so comment that we are going to remove the comment later. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So of course the design is ready, but it doesn't work yet. It doesn't do anything yet. So the next thing we need to do now that we have created the design is to begin to work on the functionality. So, okay, one more thing. So let's add the label, something that will be showing some kind of report or result later. We'll just put the text, the text here. So that will just hold the space. Okay, so, so that we can see how it looks. So, all right, so this, this handles the the text, uh, the, I mean the label. So we are calling that result. Oh, let's change that to binary. So remove that, yeah, binary. All right, so let's, let's uh, check it out. So run it, once you run it, so you look at it, so see that that will show that this one will show the validation result later or the result or if it is not, um, if issues are there, so also show in that place. So, okay, let me make it some capital letter. Let's capitalize it. Okay, binary. All right, so that is done. So the next thing we need to do is to begin to work on the functionality. All right, so now, okay, so this is how it looks so far. So let's work on the uh, functionality so let's see how can make it change mode that is from binary to decimal and vice versa okay so now what we'll do now is i'll go up here so let's just uh, write a code that will tell me which mode we are okay that if it is binary state or or, or uh, decimal so we'll create a, a variable called current state equals we'll just initialize it to zero they will create a function, that function that we called earlier, uh, change state. Then we'll say if the current state is zero, so what do we do? Okay, if the current state is zero, what do we do? So what we should do is that we should um, set the current state to one. Okay, we set this, the current, current state to one. Then after we have done that, we also need to change the various uh, aspect of the screen on the screen, like the test, like the, um, the title, on the but that the text on the on the menu the text on the on the app bar okay that the top app bar then the various text on the button then the text on the text uh, field and of course we also change that of uh, label okay so this is what we have uh, so far so if you run it now what you are going to have is uh, yeah so if you if you click on that okay so if you run it now, so let's run, let's check it out. So if I do this now, see that it changes convert to decimal from binary. So it also changes that. So let us see that if you if you run it, I mean if you click on that that rotate uh, icon, it should dismiss the text here label or the text inside. So what we we'll do now, now say save the result dot text equals nothing. Let's double quote the uh, nothing inside. So as you can see, so if you do that. It just made that disappear okay so that is basically what you have there so we have been able to do that it changes it so then otherwise that is when it should do something that's when it should then um, it should say so that if if it is one it changes if it's a zero it changes to one so i'll just highlight this and copy it so once you copy this so what we need to do is to paste it under the the s uh, body like here so here so we'll paste it here Okay, so just paste it there. They will change this one to once if it is not if it is zero, it it goes to one. 
the if it is one change it to zero basically so we just change it like that it also it will also change the various uh, items or the various text within the uh within this uh the title or the button or the test field or the test input field all right so that's what we have so far so see that i can change it like that so if you click on it again it goes back like that so it can be doing this forever it's going to be changing from binary to decimal mode and so on okay so now that we have established that so the next thing we need to do is to begin to make it work so we now create a convert input um, function or method okay so let's uh, convert input fun uh, function okay so now let's uh, uh, come here now okay so con convert number input so now say if the if it is zero so what you need to do is to convert to um so if it is zero based on what we have done up there so you convert the input to binary okay so that's what i have there so if it is zero convert the input to binary but before it does i need to make sure that you are entering the user is entering real numbers like numbers okay that's number whole numbers basically so otherwise it's going to uh, raise an exception basically it's going to show the user that and to put it in red that what you are entering is not valid for what you want to do okay so then if that happens it should return which means it doesn't con it shouldn't continue with the with the execution then uh, okay so otherwise we'll just come here and we'll say if input is this uh, is digits that if it is number basically so that's uh, is digit is a, spe a special function in uh, in uh, python so if that is the case we don't say input dot binary or being int self dot number input dot text then two that to that means that we're converting to binary basically that two columns okay so uh so basically that gives you that um changes the input to binary note that the the system would have ensured that what the user is entering is numbers and numbers only otherwise it will not it will not affect that place at all okay so all right so this is what we have so if that happens it changes it to it changes the input which is number to binary um, number representing that particular number the user entered okay so uh, that's all we have so this is the uh the the method this is where the method is uh clicked and is called rather okay when you click on that button there so it calls basically calls this function and the, when it calls this function this function executes whatever is within it which is um uh this uh, changing to to binary okay so let's test it all right so if you enter anything that is not normal that you're not supposed to enter flags and error but if you enter numbers only see that it shows uh, the, the representation i mean the binary representation of that so let's see if it's correct enter one two that's 12 it gives you one one zero zero so if you enter uh one of course it gives you one so if you enter um enter one one so it gives you one zero one one basically so that's what you have so that shows that it's working if you enter two it gives you 10 so you can check it with other platforms you see that it works okay so if you enter three it gives you 11 you enter for it gives you 100 and so on and so forth all right so uh, now that we have done that so the next thing we need to do is to uh say okay if that is that so it should tell you that you have entered the uh, i mean if if those things don't work that if the person doesn't enter what you are what is supposed to enter if it doesn't enter the numbers that it's supposed to enter so it should change those things uh, see that it should write them in red like for example you enter something that is not so you should write that input is invalid then it is only number that is allowed then that that number or the text that is written out should be in red okay let's just add that so the text should be self dot result dot text color equals red so that's what we are going to do so change that then of course the the surrounding of the text box should be normal like that so if you do this so that it's, it's in red all right so but if you enter something that makes sense it should be done properly i mean it should display properly okay so that's what you have right there okay so that does that pretty much so next is to uh, convert it to decimal that's from binary to decimal because that's actually why we're here so we need to do for the uh, both of them 
Okay, so let's just make sure that all these things are in order. That is the test input feed numbers. That is the test feed and the uh, the label should appear properly. So let's just copy this, then I'll paste it uh, here. So paste it to replace this. So you paste it, I mean you paste it here. So as you can see, so you paste it here. So once you paste it here, then let's take this one back a little bit. Okay, so that should be input. Okay, equals save the number input the text. So now remember that we just copied this one from the other end. So we copied it from uh, here. And since we comp copied it from there, so we need to alter it to suit what we are dealing with. Okay, so instead of this one to be input dot is digit. So we need to say if all character in zero one for character in input. That simply means that if all you are if all comes in, okay, if all comes in is number. So we are trying to validate it here. So if all everything that comes in, so we want to loop through whatever the person or the user enters. So if all that the user enters is number, okay. So if all that the user enters is number, that is at line. 59 if all the number in the user entered the number so you go to loop through it then what you need to do so we just utter the uh, line 60 the code in line 60 say so input equals int self dot number input dot test the command 2 so basically what it does is to convert it to regular uh, number so you can see the difference here to convert to regular a regular uh, decimal or a corresponding decimal so of course you need to cast it to string so just like you convert it to int in line 60 you also need to convert it to string when it's being produced or displayed so everything pretty much remains the same so then what should appear in uh as the result in terms of if the entire invalid input it should be only zeros or ones are allowed so that's pretty much what you have right there so as you can see uh let's look at it so as it does this so look at the code carefully if you need the code, you could just uh, let me know. So we'll make arrangements on how you can we can send the code to you. All right, so that's what you have. So let's uh, run it. Okay, so if we look at it now. Enter uh, input to so displays it correctly. Then turn it. Go to the next mode, uh, the next uh, state. So if you do this, enter binary number. So a level gives you three. And then forty three gives you because that is not a binary number so it gives you that it's only zeros and ones that you enter or zeros or ones okay so as you can see so you enter one one zero one so it gives you 13 and so on and so forth so if you also enter 23 no 26 it also gives you that corresponding binary and vice versa so as you can see it right there i hope this uh, helps you in your, in your journey to programming so you can see you can also run it on a full screen mode like this, like a full desktop app, as you can see here. So it still works. I hope this helps you in your journey to uh, in your programming journey. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Like the video and share it. See you in another video. Thank you for watching.